Hey everyone, welcome to the final video where we will finalize and finish modeling our 3D car model. This is part of a series where I'm covering car modeling from start to finish. Today's video will focus on how to add final details that will push the realism of your 3D car models. This series is targeted for beginner to advanced skill level in 3D modeling, and Maya 2020.4 will be used for this tutorial, but the workflows can be applied to any 3D software as well as any version of Maya. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Maya, and you can see that we have all 10 parts, including the final part that I'll be covering today. And you can see the progression that we've been making over each part and how we've been progressively and iteratively adding more detail and refining form as we move along. With this final video, we are going to be adding in the final details. That includes what I like to call tertiary details. So if we consider the main body of the vehicle here to be kind of the primary form, and then we continue to add secondary pieces and secondary forms, and then we add the final and tertiary details, which include things like bolts, screws, calipers, rotors, brakes, badges, and whatnot. So we're going to be covering that in this video today. I'll go ahead and hide these for now. Now, if you're just joining in, make sure to take a look at all the previous videos. And each video is about 20, 30 to max about 45 minutes. And it covers the entire process that I went through to create this vehicle. So hopefully these are nice digestible chunks that talk about the overall workflows, the skills and the techniques that I use to create these this vehicle, which is the Datsun 2040Z Resto Mod created by Sun King. Now, we're going to go and hit the first concept in this video, as always, which should be no surprise. And that's going to be refer to your reference. I'm pretty happy with the amount of reference I've been able to compile for this entire modeling process. You can kind of see that even though I have different references, you know, the Datsun 2040Z is a vehicle that is you know modded and resto modded quite a bit so i have a lot of reference that includes the full exterior a lot of different angles which is just going to make your life so much easier when modeling and these are pretty high res images as well i was able to scour the web and find a lot and i was able to find a lot of reference for the wheels and individual components badges and and whatnot so as always especially when we get to this last part where we're talking about tertiary details, you want to be able to just find as much reference as you possibly can. As always, you can never have too much reference. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. And one of the first things that I modeled for this last part were the badges. So you can see I have a badge here, and I'm going to quickly cover each one of these concepts in a, a narrated time lapse, so that should be pretty helpful for everybody. But as I like to keep things fairly modular, fairly separated, and I'm not going to have to worry about combining and overcomplicating topology. So that's one of my, you know, big tips for sure is you know keep things separate, keep things modular, and it's going to make your life really, really easy. So I'm going to go ahead now and jump to the time lapse that I used for the badges and logos. All right, so here we are, I'm working on the badge. I start with a 16-sided cylinder, add in the edges for the extrusion, and I just extrude back. So all the edge flow matches, I just ex extrude from one cylinder, and then delete the faces, so I don't have to create multiple cylinders and size them properly, so on and so forth. Once I add in those holding lines, I go ahead and create these bracket pieces just as a separate piece of geometry. Because this is a small badge, I don't have to worry about complicating geometry. I don't have to worry about adding this to the other edge flow of the other models, right? It's just, I'm gonna just shoot it right in there and it's just gonna intersect without being attached. Then I go through and grab some reference images. So reference images were pretty crucial here and for the badge, and then I grab one for the Z, for the Datsun uh, 240Z. And I go through, and I'm just using Quadra. I'm building up the geometry here, keeping the geometry edge flow fairly nice and clean. And then I space things out uh, as needed. And I make sure it looks good subdivided as well, because I will be subdividing this. Uh, I could have gone through and just 
added extra edge flow, but I wanted to make everything a sub D model. And in order to do that, I needed offset, add in this extra extrusion uh, as an offset to hold the form. And once I do that, I go through and add in extra holding lines here. And this just keeps things nice and clean. And I do another extrusion to get that uh, lip uh, there for the Z. And then I continue to add in more geometry. And this is the workflow that I used for the Fuguzi Z that you'll see uh, right after this. But like I said, I go through, add in the holding lines, add in the form, and then I go through and finish the rest of this emblem here, this badge. And you know, I keep things separate pieces that need to be separate pieces. Just going through, adding some holding lines, making sure that the form holds up. Because again, I will be subdividing this. Nothing wrong if you wanted to just start with a higher poly, but like I said, I'm keeping things uh, using the subd workflow, which is why I start either I'll use 16 or 32, depending on how big the piece is. And I did end up goofing that one piece, uh, but I ended up fixing that and then moving it and using a, just a duplicate and rotate there. But yeah, I go through, finish this, I get the right form here, make sure everything looks good. And this is where I goofed and I had to fix it because it, uh, the lighting was playing kind of a trick where it looked like it was going the other way. But I catch it, fix it, and then duplicate, rotate, and that's pretty much all there is to it. I then group that, adjust the pivot, size, rotate, and move it, and put it in position. All right, now I go find reference for the Fuguzi Z emblem. I set a plane at the origin, and then I start quad drawing. And I'm just using this quad draw tool, right? There isn't any text that's going to match this. So quad draw is gonna be your go-to tool here. And you can see, I just kind of skip towards the uh, end here. And you can kind of see, it's just me building up this geometry, making sure that it all looks good, um, that you've seen me use uh, over and over again. But I wanted to make sure that you see how I did this because it also has this black backdrop. Now I didn't use the existing geometry, I was thinking about using it, but instead I just created this as a completely separate piece of geometry that matches that silhouette that is gonna give us that nice stroke look. And this is just gonna simplify things. And then I do this uh, workflow uh, over and over until I get the uh, overall form for the Fuguzi Z backdrop, and it works out pretty well here. And I keep things nice and simple. And I keep these openings in here. So when I have something like that, I like to model uh, around that hole there. So I'm going through just kind of building up. And once I do that, I then, you know, extrude and then I'm gonna extrude and also do an offset to hold that inner form. This is really, really important. You always need that offset on the inside of your text geometry only when you're subdividing because it's gonna help hold that form. Then I'm adding in the geometry with the insert uh, edge flow or multi-cut with edge flow on. So that's gonna help uh, follow the curvature of what I have. So there we go adding in the holding lines, adding in some extra geometry that I need because I'm modeling this as a sub D model. And then here again, you'll see that offset and then holding lines because it's gonna help hold that form. Once I do that, I get it, group it, keep the pivot, and then put it in position. All right, now that you've seen how I've done the badges and logos, the next thing that I'm going to cover is how I finalize the wheel rims and the detail that you can see that I've added here, which is going to be the lug nuts, the wheel cap, caliper, and the disc rotor. Now I didn't capture the entire process since you know I've covered wheel modeling and lug nuts and bolts and everything in the past video, but I will cover what I did to create these, these calipers. Now these calipers aren't 100% perfect, and that's okay for the purposes of what I'm trying to create, but they hold up really well. The overall form is there, and I have the logo and the badge, and it's gonna hold up from all the shots that I'm gonna be using for my future renders, all right? Now, in full disclosure, I did pull these calipers. These were one of the only things that I pulled from previous models. 
and I used them from another vehicle and then I just modified it to look like what I have here. So when you see me start this in the time lapse, you'll see that I have a kind of starting base and then I just modified it. But at the end of the day, these are very straightforward, very simple forms and shapes. They may look complicated, but at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, it's got a simple, simple form. All right. Now, the other thing that I did along with the brakes, calipers and rotors is I've added kind of this underbody chassis and suspension, which is another thing that I pulled from a vehicle just because I, I didn't want a lot of detail here, but I wanted it to be representative because you're going to see and you will see this a lot in the reference is that you're going to get a lot of suspension detail underneath. And depending on the mod, you know, it's going to be fairly visible or not nearly as visible. But you want to make sure that you have something representative here. Obviously, we have the exhaust, the muffler, and then you have uh, all the detail that kind of leads to underneath the vehicle here. So all that is going to help add to that realism. All right. So let's go ahead now and jump into the time lapse where I'm modeling the, the brakes. All right. So now we're jumping on to the calipers. I didn't do the rotor, the disc, because it was pretty straightforward. It's just an extruded cylinder. And here you can see, I just grabbed again, just this caliper that I had, and I'm adjusting the form to match the reference. Now this one was tricky because I could not find really any good reference of this brakes, despite finding the exact make and model of it. Uh, if anybody finds some good reference, please share it in the comments and let me know. But uh, I just used the photography reference that I had. I had a ton, a lot of close-up shots, and I just, again, just I just needed to hold up from that uh, from the far further view renders. The wheel will always be in full shot, so the brake just needs to be there to to hold up. So then I just delete geometry that I don't need, refine the form that I do need, and then I'm just extruding edges and building up geometry uh, as I need it. All right. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of pieces that go into a caliper, but I'm not modeling every single piece. Now, if there was close up shots, I certainly would be adding in brake lines and hoses and, and whatnot. But for now, that's just not needed. So I go through and refine the form based on the topology that I have, add in those extra extrusions, add in those holding lines. And then you'll see how I kind of add in this extrusion here and then add in these beveled chamfered holding lines. Then I circularize, I extrude and punch that in so I can add a screw in there later. And then here are these, these bolts and other components that are part of a pretty complicated component that is a brake caliper. And then once I get all that, I just combine bevel holding lines and then I'm eventually going to mirror that and move on to the rear caliper. So here's the rear caliper. I actually just grabbed this piece, split it in half, and deleted any unneeded geometry. And this is a pretty simple box form anyways. I could have started from scratch, but you know, I wanted to show you guys that it's completely fine to just grab models and models that you've done or even models online if you get pretty close and just delete the, you know, and refine the geometry if you if you're still learning how to model, just to save time on these these simpler components. But I use that and I get the form that I need and I go ahead and refine the detail. Once I do that, I mirror it over, put it in position, and then later I'll put on the Fuguzi logo there that you saw in the earlier videos. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to be looking at is how I worked and finalized the fenders here. Now for these fenders, you, you are going to see that I ended up subdividing this once from the previous form, because if you take a look at here, this is kind of where I started. And then I refined this form a little bit more and finalized some of the detail. And I've also given these things this nice lip that really helps it look like it's attached to the geometry. I did not just stop it here. I give it this nice lip that goes underneath and really gives it that look that it's bolted on. Previously, you can see that I just kind of stopped right here and it's pretty obvious and it looks kind of fake when you really start to get close to it. So that's why I, you always want to do that nice extra extrusion and make sure that it looks like it's attached, all right? So I needed to subdivide it so I could also add in these grooves and these indentations for these bolts here. 
I could not do that without subdividing and I didn't want to really mess up and really make it just a messy amount of topology and edge flow in the base form. This is where I covered this in the last video too, where I subdivide and then I add more detail. This is, that's what, especially what I did for things like the door handle and the fuel cap. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at that workflow in more detail. All right, so now we're getting on to the rear fenders. I definitely was putting this off towards the end. I knew this was gonna be a lot of detail and a lot of work here, and it definitely was. There was no easy way around this. So, but yeah, I just, you know, clinched down and started taking care of it. So I'm adding in more geometry. I know for sure that I'm gonna to have to add in some extra edge loops because of all those details in the bolts. I probably, in hindsight, should have started with a more higher poly fender, but it ended up working fine because I just subdivided. Then before I start doing the extrusions, I go through and add in the screw positions and I wanna just make sure that I get the right amount first and the right spacing first before uh, you know, going through and actually doing the extrusion because I didn't wanna get that wrong once I started doing that. All I used was a simple cylinder for now just to get that spacing. And then I realized, well, I should probably, since I'm already positioning it, create an actual detailed screw. So that's what I do here. I go through and you'll see kind of this nice simple technique that I use with a 16 sided cylinder. I remove edges that I don't need, cut straight across. That way I get that cross extrusion for kind of your standard Phillips screw. And then I extrude offset, extrude offset, adding in holding lines. And then I'm gonna add in holding lines on the flat surface to help hold that form. Now again, there's nothing wrong if I took this with a higher poly cylinder and then just beveled and went about my way. But I really wanna show you guys all these different, you know, sub D high poly techniques. So there, once I add that, I go ahead and position that and then now I start cutting in. So I start cutting in geometry after I subdivided the fender. I start welding and then I add in this holding line and I just need it to hold up pretty well and it does. And you can see that once I get that in position, I just kind of move on and just apply this workflow, this technique over and over again. There was well over 20 fender extrusions. So there was you know, no way to really automate this because it was topology dependent and sometimes I had to make some, some adjustments. But yeah, it, uh, it definitely took a while. It's something I had to do, come back to, just because it was kind of really mind numbing. Uh, but you know, I got through it, no problem, uh, despite how boring that was, and I just moved on. So you can see, I'm just making some adjustments, refinements, I'm testing different methods of holding lines, but I ended up coming down to just one edge to hold this. And I skipped to the end here at the end fender or at the bottom, so you don't have to see me do that over and over. And then I didn't really capture the front because it was literally the same exact thing. Then I used this for the keyhole. All right, the next one is going to be finalizing these side view mirrors. You can see what I did here and it was very straightforward, very simple. I went ahead and just added a nice simple extrusion, added this screw bolt that I have in here, and then added this piece of geometry here that makes it look like it's attached. I didn't have to worry about cutting anything out because you have this kind of uh, mold, this bezel here, this trim piece that's going to cover any obvious extrusion holes. I made sure to get some nice shots here of this in, in, in high detail. And you can kind of also see these little bolts here. So this is what I use primarily to, to create this and was really, really simple. All right, so then I jump over to the side view mirror. I wanna make some just final adjustments to the overall form based on that nice reference image that I have. And I grab the screw and then do the simple extrusion. This is a really, really simple update here, but I just wanna make sure to capture this so you can see all the detail that I'm putting into this model. And I did have to scale up that screw since it was larger. And then here for kind of this stem piece, I use that method where I cut these, the geometry. I use make live on the vehicle surface. And then I conform that geometry so it sticks to that, you know, one to one. Now, if you're curious on how I did that, I cover that in detail step by step in a previous tutorial. So make sure to check my part nine video on that. 
Then I go through, add in those holding lines, and then I add in this, this plastic molding trim piece that I just extrude, and then I have to go through and manually fix because the extrude uh, there didn't really do what I wanted. But it all works out in the end, and there we go. All right, so the next one is finalizing the rear body. And the other thing that I did also was finalizing the front piece area with the wipers. You can see, and again, full disclosure, this is one of the other only pieces where I just kind of pulled these wipers uh, from a different model that looked really similar to this. So I was pretty happy with that. And, you know, I made some, some subtle modifications just so it matched it, but I didn't want to start from scratch on, on these wipers. But the same rules apply here is that each one of these are separate elements and you're not over complicating the form if you have something that's very very intricate like a wiper remember just break it up into smaller simpler pieces that you can later you know add further detail for uh, whatever you're modeling all right i still need to you know make sure that it's flush with the window but for now this will hold up perfectly fine and you can see I've added in these nice vents. This one actually almost snuck past me, but you do see this in a lot of more of the uh, aerial shots here. So this was really a detail that I wanted to add here. And it's going to give you a, a lot more realism. Again, just these nice simple extrusions here for these vents. And again, what I did was subdivide first and then go in, cut and extrude and then I made sure everything was nice and even for these extrusions and they hold up really well and look really, really good. Now, if we jump to the back here where, where I did most of the capturing, you're going to see that now I have this geometry that holds up here. And this is again coming from the reference. Now, for this resto mod, uh, Sun Kang opted not to have a rear brace or rear bumper. So... I went ahead and had to model this because otherwise you pretty much see that on all the other ones. So you have kind of this rear uh, bumper here that's going to help, you know, just give it some some style. But you opted to not have that here. So I had to make sure to go ahead and add that. And then you kind of see this piece here as well, uh, right underneath the license plate where it's, it's further used to attach. So you can see I've added both of those here. And along with that, I've added the exhaust uh, opening as well. All right. And I made sure to also really kind of start curving in some of this geometry. So again, it looks, it doesn't look like the vehicle just stops, right? You get this nice transition that gives you this nice lighting here. Okay. You kind of see this lighting, especially on the side. And you see previously on the last one, I just kind of ended it right here, knowing that I'm going to come back and kind of fix that and add more geometry later. All right. So these are kind of the details that you really want to add that's going to help really ground your vehicles and and your car models in, in the future. All right. And the other one is I added in quite a bit of detail to the rear spoiler as well. So just some nice, simple extrusions. They weren't like a two hard cut lines. Um, they weren't too hard of a cut line so i've added those and added some nice extrusions here uh, that you see in the reference so again you kind of see that there's some of these you'll see this you'll see different versions of this also in the reference so i just opted to get pretty close to whichever one that i saw but you can see the extrusions kind of uh, happening there all right all right we'll move this over here and that's what i used for the rear uh, area here so let's go ahead and take a look at that in the time lapse all right so now i'm jumping to the back and the rear and i go through and i start cutting in this geometry now you'll notice i did not do this on the high poly version instead i just added in you know a total of about uh, two or three extra edges there which is all i needed to get this form uh, here then i cut and i you know take a couple tries to get this looking right but once I get it looking right, I just kind of move manually move that in. Then I add in these holding lines. Then I kind of go back and forth here and try to figure out the best way to get this to work. But, you know, make sure to pause and take a look exactly how I did it. It is captured in the time lapse. And I just use this double kite uh, tool there. Workflow. And then once I do that, I skip to the rear exhaust and that rear extrusion. Very simple. 
and you know I just added in some extra edges so if you're following along I just added some extra edges and did that simple extrusion which was exactly what I need and then I cut in this geometry for the exhaust and I used a simple cylinder with an extruded edge and that gave me exactly what I needed I didn't boolean or anything I just mainly cut it and extruded it okay and those were all the time-lapse captures that I've had for this video and the other things that I didn't really capture but I did modify was I did want to make sure that I added this piece here that you can kind of see you know it could be just kind of this rain protector that they have on this vehicle again it was one of those things that almost snuck in under the radar but you can kind of see that in uh, a lot of the different references here and then I've also went through and really made sure that the window chrome bezels were cut out and separated and look really good because typically you're not going to have this be one uh, smooth entire piece here especially for these older vehicles I have the door handle I've added keyholes as well so that gives you a little bit more realism. I've ad added and finalized, or I would say refine, these blackout pieces of geometry. You can, of course, like here you can see, you know, there's a hint, there's a faint. So if you wanted to create like a radiator or something that, you know, is pretty obvious, you certainly can. And depending on the direction of the light, like here you can clearly see it with the light, it, light hitting it pretty much dead on. So, you know, it just kind of depends on how much effort and detail that you want to put in there. So, you know, you can just continue and continue to add. Obviously, right now, I don't have any interior uh, or anything. So I'm probably going to, at minimum, create a representative interior so I can at least not have to black out the windows. And I can maybe do like a dark tint where you can kind of see, you know, just the silhouette of the interior uh, and whatnot. So I'll probably do that. And if I do that, you know, I can cover my technique and workflows for creating, you know, depending on how detailed I want to go, uh, interiors. Definitely let me know down in the comments. If you guys want me to cover interiors, I have a lot of experience doing vehicle uh, car interiors as well, car seats, steering wheels, instrument panels, door panels, all that, the whole gamut. So let me know for sure. And uh, you can see this little fuel cap as well. I went ahead and added in that uh, final detail after I subdivided it, right? So really, really happy with how everything came together. I'm really happy with uh, how, you know, uh, I was able to capture pretty much the entire process here to create this vehicle that looks really close to uh, the reference here. So uh, if there's anything you guys want me to cover in a future video, please let me don't know again down in the comments if you want me to do more modeling videos. I definitely plan to light this and do some materials. So this isn't the last time you'll see this model um, for sure, but I'm gonna at least unwrap it, show some materials and show some basic lighting techniques to really make this look like a nice portfolio piece. So for those that are learning 3D car modeling and you're spending a lot of time, I can show you some really, really good techniques for how to present your models. So let me know down below which one you would prefer to see first and I can start getting uh, moving on the tutorials and adding that to the queue and the backlog that I have. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All my videos are free and I plan to keep them that way. So if you find them helpful, do share them with other people. Uh, I've had some really good growth here in the past few months. I'm really happy about that. So it just keeps me motivated to, to keep making these videos uh, and put out as many videos as I can out uh, every month. So thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. You know, really happy with uh, the direction this channel is going. So. Some people have also asked if they can download the model. So I do plan on putting this up for sale on my ArtStation store. So keep an eye out for that. So make sure to follow me there and my Gumroad and Instagram. I'll be posting that uh, all over the place and I won't be posting it for uh, a crazy amount. You know, I'll be putting it up there for maybe 10 bucks, 20 bucks or or whatever, something pretty cheap. And I'll throw some discounts, uh, definitely some, some big discounts for you guys that are liking and subscribing and, and, and sharing my content. So, and that's the least I can do for, for you, having you guys follow along. So, so with that, I'll see you around.